Good morning students. Today we begin with part 5 of the Tempest. And today we will come to the main climax of the story, the Tempest, where we see that Prospero's intention of taking revenge from his brother and the king of Naples is fulfilled. The reason for raising the Tempest was this. Let's do the reading. When Prospero left them, he called his spirit Ariel, who quickly appeared before him, eager to relate what he had done with Prospero's brother and the king of Naples. Ariel said he had left them almost out of their senses with fear at the strange things he had caused them to see and hear. When fatigued with wandering about and famished for want of food, he had suddenly set before them a delicious banquet, and then just as they were going to eat, he appeared uh, visible before them in the shape of a half-bee, a voracious monster with wings, and the feast vanished away. Then to their utter amazement, this seeming harpy spoke to them, reminding them of their cr cruelty in driving Prospero from his dukedom and leaving him and his infant daughter to perish in the sea, saying that for this cause these terrors were suffered to afflict them. The king of Naples and Antonio, the false brother, repented the injustice they had done to Prospero, and Ariel told his master he was certain their penitence was sincere, and that he, though a spirit, could not but pity them. Then bring them hither, Ariel, said Prospero, if you who are but a spirit feel for their distress, shall not I? who am a human being like themselves, have compassion on them? Bring them quickly, my, dear, my dainty Ariel. Ariel soon returned with the king, Antonio and old Gonzalo in their train, who had followed them, wondering at the wild music he played in the air to draw them on to his master's presence. This Gonzalo was the same who had so kindly provided Prospero formerly with books and provisions when his wicked brother left him, as he thought to perish in an open uh, boat in the sea. Grief and terror had so stupefied their senses that they did not know Prospero. He first discovered himself to the good old Gonzalo, calling him the preserver of his life, and then his brother and the king knew that he was the injured Prospero. So children, we see, uh, after making himself sure that Ferdinand really loved his daughter Miranda, Prospero now shifted to fulfillment of his second job, that is to teach his wicked brother and the king of Naples a lesson with the help of Ariel, his dear spirit. Ariel told him that he had created such a scene which made Antonio and king of Naples go out of their senses and get frightened when they were hungry and tired he laid before them different types of food but as they pounced on it he took he just made the feast and the banquet vanished away and he came in the form of a harpy and made the food go away and then reminded them how they had done cruelty to his brother and his lovely little daughter. Thus they both repented. That is, they had a regret for their past conduct with such sincerity that Ariel felt pity on them. Prospero told him to bring those two people and the others as he as a human being also felt pity for them. Ariel, through his music, made them to come in the presence of Prospero. Gonzalo, who had helped Prospero with food, stores and books, was also there. They were so stupefied, that is, uh, King of Naples and Antonio, they were so stupefied with um, sadness and fear that they could not recognize Prospero. They could not know Prospero. And then when uh, Prospero called Gonzalo his savior 
and then they both recognized him as Prospero who was a sufferer because of them. Now we will continue in the next video. Let's continue reading. Antonio, with tears and sad words of sorrow and true repentance, implored his brother's forgiveness, and the king expressed his sincere remorse for having assisted Antonio to depose his brother. And Prospero forgave them, and upon their engaging to restore his dukedom, he said to the king of Naples, I have a gift in store for you too. And opening a door, showed him his son Ferdinand playing at chess with Miranda. Nothing could exceed the joy of the father and the son at this unexpected meeting, for they each thought the other drowned in the storm. Oh, wonder, said Miranda, what noble creatures these are. It must surely be a brave world that has such people in it. The king of Naples was almost as much astonished at the beauty and excellent graces of young Miranda as its son had been. Who is this maid? said he. She seems the goddess that has parted us and brought us thus together. No, sir, answered Ferdinand, smiling to find his father had fallen into the same mistake that he had done when he first saw Miranda. She is a mortal, but by immortal providence she is mine. I chose her when I could not ask you, my father, for your consent, not thinking you were alive. She is the daughter of this Prospero, who is the famous Duke of Milan, of whose renown I have heard so much, but never saw him till now. Of him I have received a new life. He has made himself to me a second father, giving me this lady. Antonio was deeply uh, regretting his bad behavior towards his brother. And children, a time comes, you know, when people do realize their mistakes or their bad conduct done to others so he asked for forgiveness and the king of naples too regretted having helped antonio the result was that prospero forgave them they said they would give back his uh, antonio also declared children that he would give back this uh, dukedom to prospero on this prospero told them that he wanted to show them a gift and took them where Ferdinand and Miranda uh, were sitting and playing chess. King of Naples was King of Naples could not believe his eyes when he saw his son because he had thought that his son had drowned. And Ferdinand also had thought the same way that his father, the King of Naples, had drowned. Ferdinand's father also thought Miranda to be a maid or a goddess as Ferdinand had earlier mistaken her to be. But Ferdinand told him that she was a human being and daughter of Prospero, whom he calls his preserver of new life, that is, a second father. As he had given him his daughter's hand, he also declared that he had heard lots about Prospero's fame. Ferdinand disclosed to his father of having accepted Miranda to be his, as he had thought his father to be dead, because he had no guardian above him to uh, open out his feelings. So he just accepted Miranda on his own. With this, we come to the end of the explanation of part 5, the Tempest, of the Tempest. Have a good day, students.